alcoholic. Um, how we open up this meeting is with the set aside prayer. And the reason why is because we're all coming here with a certain idea of what we think the program is. What we Let's heard. remind them what they're not to do first before we clear their mind. Yeah, yeah go ahead, Kim. Keep Please them remember mind. to keep your clothes on at all times while here in the meeting, or you will be turned off your camera or kicked out of the meeting. Any inappropriate behavior will have you removed immediately. Thank you, Joe. I wonder how many of them were like, should I do it? <laughs> well, this meeting's been known. Everybody gets so fired up that the clothes start coming off. and just like, so easy, people, on your enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anyway, listen. I said, the set aside prayer. Dear God, please help set aside everything I think I know about myself, this book, my illness, these steps, and especially about you, dear God, so that I might have an open mind and a new experience with all these things. Please help me to see the truth. And Tony, it's all yours. Let's see. Right now, I'm a recovered alcoholic. My name's Tony. I'd like to welcome everybody to our Zoom Big Book Study Workshop or the Program of Recovery laid out by the first 100 men and women in their basic text. We, we stick with the guidelines of the basic text and the information in it. The, the problem that, that a lot of people have in the fellowship is they hear so many different ideas to what they think it says, they can't read what it actually says. And they're so influenced by other people's design of this thing or, or influence how they were taken through it or what their sponsor said or what their treatment center said or what their group of people said that they don't actually see what it actually says right so good sponsorship will, will actually bring you to the book and say what does the book say not what i say my sponsor taught me how to read the big book of alcoholics anonymous because my mind has has a keen ability to interpret things as 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 they suit me. I don't know if anybody has that ability here or to read over the pertinent information looking for things that make sense to me. So if I was to read through this book and look for things that made sense to me, I'd miss 90% of it, right? Because the thinking I was using, bringing to the table. So what I was bringing to the table was untreated alcoholism, right? And a warped mind and, and, and experience filled with resentment, anger, and hostility, but I didn't know that. I thought, you know, I, I depended on my thinking. So as they started taking me through this, I started getting right off the hop, like some new information that I never heard before. Like like I've said previous talks, I, I've been in and out of fellowship up to the time somebody introduced me to the program, 11 years. So my first meeting was in 1978. And, and the first time somebody introduced me to the program of Alcoholics Anonymous was in 1989. And as the application of this thing through the teaching and guidance of my sponsor, I've been sober ever since. So what they talk about in a preface is that we learn that this is the basic text. This is the program of recovery. When we go to meetings, we're in the fellowship. They are not one and the same. You could go to fellowships and still not be in the program or practicing a program of recovery. If it was a program of recovery, it'd go against their traditions. What's the only requirement for a membership is the desire to stop drinking. Right? The third tradition protects you from us and us from you. That, that's what it basically says. It tells us to just easy on a new person, let them guide through there, and hopefully they hear some information or you can 12-step them. But anyhow, well, then we find out who this is put together by. Right. So collectively, we see right off the hop, it's not my program, it's their program. It's not my understanding, it's their understanding. We hear every people say, I'm working on my program. Well, that explains a lot of the chaos and confusion in your life, right? Because if you want what we have and are willing to get any lengths to get it, then you're ready to take certain steps. In order to understand what we have, it has to be demonstrated by those who went before us, right? So the only actual uh, exhibit that we have to this thing is those that went before us that said, this is what I used to be like, this is what happened, and this is what I'm like now. Right, and so the forward to the first edition talks about this thing that is kind of collectively put together by those who found, who commonly had a, a problem, who found a solution and a course of action. And they talk about we of Alcoholics Anonymous are more than 100 men and women who have recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. To show other alcoholics precisely how we have recovered is the main purpose of this book. 
So right off the hop, they're, they're saying that a hundred of them agree on what the problem is, what the solution is, and what the course of action is. It's not for me recovery or my understanding or or as I see it, right? It's collective. That means they all agree on what the problem is, what the solution is, what the course of action is. I need to find out what they mean by those things. So we went through the doctor's opinion. I started seeing what they understood as the problem in regards to alcoholism. We found out what the first symptom in alcoholism was, was what? The physical allergy. It made good sense why we drank the way we did. And then why couldn't we stop? The doctor talked about there's something kind of not quite right in the mechanism called our mind. Right, and regardless of our efforts and, and, and our wishes and our, and and all the solemnos to stop drinking, we're unable to stop drinking. And he kind of witnessed that people who had these characteristics, which is alcoholism, or that made, made them an alcoholic, or that had an alcoholic mind, they were unable to stop on their own resources. So that goes kind of contrary to what you hear in the fellowship. You hear a lot of people say, "I do step, I stay sober on step one every day." Well, then if you could stay sober on step one, then step one doesn't apply to you. Right, I surrender in step one, which doesn't change anything. Right, it's like if I went out to my car and the battery was dead, and I tried to turn it on, and I had to get somewhere desperately, and and if I missed this appointment, it would be crucial, and the battery wasn't working, there was no power in it. If I sat there for accept, in a, for a moment, and I just had acceptance around it, or I surrendered to it then my car should start, right? No, the problem still remains regardless of my position. I could get all my friends hold hands around that car and sing Kumbaya and it ain't changing nothing, right? So acceptance, surrender, and all these things that we hear in regards to step one, admitting it 100%, it's the only step you can do 100%. Yes, when I sat in my car and I came to the conclusion based on the evidence presented that the battery's dead, it's not working, Right, So what I mean in that moment is an entire, what we call is a psychic change or a boost sufficient enough to restart, re-kick the engine to get it going the way I need it. And the doctor talked about it, he talked about relapse continue to happen in spite of all our efforts of not happening. Unless an entire psychic change or spiritual experience happens, these people continue to relapse. They never said how long, three months, six months, five months, but inevitably they'll find themselves drinking again. That's the baffling feature of alcoholism. When we went through Bill's story, we discovered that. We also discovered, we seen in Bill's story what he was like. What happened was the course of action that was presented to him by Bill I mean, by Ebby, he went through this thing. As Ebby went through it, Ebby guided him through this thing. And then he had a psychic change sufficient enough to bring about recovery. What happened before the psychic change was he entered a new relationship with his maker, his creator, whatever you want to call it. It's secondary. He got access to power that was sufficient enough for him to recover. Right? It was showing a way of life that enabled him, that answered all his problems. Right? It was able to help him go through rough times. What happened beforehand was Bill did step one and he got drunk again. Second time in treatment, Bill surrendered, had acceptance and all that other stuff and the willingness and the gift of desperation, all this catchphrase shit that we hear nowadays. It sounds nice, but it really does shit for people who are dying of alcoholism. It makes them feel better as they're dying, but that actually doesn't do anything. Like we don't have a slogan that says figure it out, but we're all trying to figure it out. It's already figured out. My job or my sponsor's job is to guide me through this. So we see in Bill's story that he was presented with a course of action that brought about this psychic change as the doctor talked about. We see he exhibit the symptoms of alcoholism and his inability to get sober based on his own experience. He ended up in treatment three times. So what enabled him to find a new way of life, he entered a new relationship with a power greater than himself. Right? He was to tech, check his newfound thinking with the new God consciousness within. And that brings us to we agnostics, right? When we got through we agnostics, or even before that, we seen that the promise of step one is actually that we're going to relapse again. That's what we're admitting to, is that I'm going to relapse 100% outside of divine help or outside of psychic change or spiritual experience. Because if I was able to get the help or the hope, or the change in step one, then I wouldn't need step two. Step two is the solution to step one. Step one in itself is, they talked about here, to be doomed to an alcoholic death or to accept spiritual help. Spiritual help is from steps two to 11, right? Step 12 says, having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, the change has already happened. Right, The rest of the book's dedicated on how do I carry this message and practice these principles after step 11. 
right? So we go through and then we find out that the only thing that's going to save us from ourselves is the last page on, on we more about alcoholism, on page 43. You want to read that? I'm getting kind of fired up here a bit, right? So you kind of you want to read the last uh, paragraph there, page 43. The, yep. It's the only, the only other chapter that spends 11 pages trying to get you to understand something is the second symptom of alcoholism. They spend 11 pages trying to get you to understand the malady that centers in the mind of the alcoholic that places them beyond human aid, something you can't see, feel, and touch. They call it a phenomena. It's an unexplainable event. And they give you examples that when this thing happens in our mind, the suddenly that we're drinking again. Anybody suffer from the suddenly here? How many people has relapsed here? You put up your hand. Put up two hands. You have the right to remain silent. Anybody know that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. Okay, last sentence, last paragraph, once page 43. More, once more, the alcoholic at certain times has no effective mental defense against the first drink. Effective. Except in a few rare cases, neither he nor any other human being can provide such a defense. His defense must come from a higher power. Which kind of makes sense, right? That if we're beyond human aid, what makes us beyond human aid is the second symptom in alcoholism. How do you know if you have it? Look back in your drinking history. Because if you didn't have it the first time you made the solemn oath, how many people remember the first time they said they'd never do it again? How many people remember that? Put up your hand if you remember the first time you said never again. And did you do it again? Put up your hand if you did that. Or how about just leaving your hand up? How many people did it more than once? There you go. That's where you should just say help, right? <laughs> so we see without realizing it, I've been placed beyond human aid, but a part of my mind can't fully acknowledge that because I think I'll learn from my experience that it won't happen again. Well, did it happen the last time? Well, I didn't mean it that time. Yes, you did because you pursued help, right? If you didn't mean it, you wouldn't have come in looking for help. You wouldn't have come looking for change. You wouldn't. Anyways, we've covered that in great detail. So when we get to we agnostics, how many symptoms are there in alcoholism? Two. How many do we hear in the fellowship? Three. Most of us don't know where this one comes from. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's just two. We add the third one, which doesn't do anything, right? There's, oh, that didn't look right. There's only two symptoms in alcoholism. The physical allergy and the malady that centers in the mind. It's not the obsession. The obsession doesn't refer to the alcoholic who has done step one. The obsession refers to people who have not done step one yet. Page 30. The malady on page 23 refers to the main problem of the alcoholic that centers in his mind, which is classified or, or clarified on page 37. They talk, they talk about this malady being a phenomena, an unexplainable event that happens in people like us. So they gave examples on people, what it looks like to relapse in spite of all our efforts not to. It reconfirms that places us behind human aid. So they do the two questions here. And if you have this, which is there are actually three questions in step one. The third question is, can I quit upon a non-spiritual basis? Well, how well have I done so far? Well, I haven't. So if I need the psychic change or spiritual experience, we agnostics designed to guide you through it so you can find out the basis of their understanding what they mean by a power greater than themselves. Right? Made a decision to turn our will and life over the care of God as we understand him. I need to understand what they're talking about. So what they talk about is on page 45 here. And what is it? Lack of power. That was our dilemma. We had to find a power by which we could live, and it had to be a power greater than ourselves. Obviously. Obviously, the longest sentence in the book. Obviously. Well, you know, obviously what? Well, look at your life. How well have you been doing so far with you? Do you want to continue being your own solution? So we've seen the first obsession had to be that I had to smash the idea that I could be my own solution. How many people found that a long and tedious process? Huh? How many people found that a painful process? What makes you, confirms the idea that you can't be your own solution? Usually a 24-hour chip. How many people has had 24-hour chips here? You reconfirm that you can't be your own solution. And how many people say, well, it's not going to happen again, and then it happened again. That's where we hand out chips and not plaques. 
right? The chip's a reminder that the, the odds of you getting another one are not in your favor. Anybody ever, ever see someone get a chip? They're so happy about it. And then they drop it. goes bing, 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 bing along the floor. That's how fast sobriety's lost. Like that. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. What happened? Suddenly. I don't know. I was just standing there minding my own, my own business. Next thing I know, I'm being read my rights. <laughs> Anybody have a 911 experience here? Anyway. <laughs> uh, obviously. So we need this power. Where and yep. how were we to find this power? Wow. Because why do we need to find this power to create this psychic change of spiritual experience? Because I have an alcoholic mind. If I don't have this psychic change of spiritual experience, what's my fate? What's the promise? The promise of step one is I'm going to drink again. I don't say this. The book says that. You hear people say, the book doesn't say that. Try, I nearly swear there. Try reading it. And if you can't see it, get somebody to explain it to you. Right? So, lack of power. I need to get this power to create this psychic change of spiritual experience. Well, this is where it says, now you start thinking what it means to you, right? <laughs> Nowhere has, you notice it hasn't said, hey, you know what? Take a second out, think about it, and what makes sense to you. They say, no, no, no. You're not qualified to think. Right? That's why they only ask you a few questions. I don't know if you've picked up on that yet. They've only asked you a few questions. Why don't they ask you more questions than, do you have the allergy? That when you drink, it triggers a phenomenon of craving. Yes or no? Can you stop on a non-spiritual basis? Yes or no? You know why they don't ask you more questions than that? Because we're salesmen. We, we just start talking bullshit and, and we just keep talking till people stop listening and then we go, okay, that's awesome. Like anybody have the gift of gab here? Oh yeah. Anybody have the you know how you, you, if you want to know how good you are in your gift? If anybody been confronted about something you've done here? How many yeah. people has been confronted on something you've done by somebody? Anybody talk back to them long enough where they apologize to you for even bringing it up? Yeah. <laughs> and then ask for twenty bucks. Okay, so but go back. <laughs> So where and how am I to find this power that creates this psychic change of spiritual experience because my life and my fate depends on it, right? They didn't say figure it out here. It's not one of our slogans, right? They're not going to leave you on a hook here. We know that I need to have this change. What, what's motivating me now is the fate of step one and the conclusion of conceding to my innermost self that I'm alcoholic. Unless I have this change, I'm going to die an alcoholic death because I only have two alternatives now. To go on to the bitter end, Blotting out the incomprehensible sit of my situation. The other was accept spiritual help. So where and how am I to find this help? Well, that's exactly what this book is all about. Its main object is to enable you to find a power greater than yourself, which will solve your problem. Help you solve your problem or solve your problem? Solve. We think it says help us solve our problem. God, God does for me what I can't do for myself. That should be about everything. Right? You ever hear people say that? Well, God won't do for you what you can do for yourself. Well, if lack of power is your dilemma, what exactly is the delusion that you're driven by? Self. Right? Self creates the problems that you're trying to escape. Right? Everything that brought you to this point has made sense to you one way or another. And if you're being governed by alcoholism, your story will always remain the same. Never better, always worse. Anybody's relapse getting better here? No. How many people looking forward to the next one? How many people's families just thrilled to death about the idea of you coming home loaded? Show of hands. Yeah. I thought okay. I'd seen one. <laughs> I've seen one. Yeah. Okay, so... Where and how were we to find this power? So they tell us on page 55, which is collectively. Collectively, they all agreed we need to get access to a power because lack of power is my dilemma. Not for me. It's for us collectively. If you have this problem, then you need this solution. All of us. Not some of us. All of us. Right? And then they explain what they mean by this power and where and how to find it. Where do we all find this power? Not some of us. All of us. It's a collective experience, right? And if you haven't been through this, you'll start arguing right away with your understanding. How many people arguing a bit? And so, because you haven't, you don't understand what we're talking about. Once you understand what we talk about, it's easily obtainable. So, page fifty-five. 
Which one do you want me to start at? Well, yes. let's start with actually. Actually, we were fooling ourselves. For deep down in every man, woman, and child is the fundamental idea of God. Not some of us, all of us. And we understand because we've done that exercise is that intuitiveness or that voice that talks to you. It's always talked to you. That's that voice that says, hey, what are you doing? What's the matter with you? How many people have that voice? You're looking at you in the mirror going, what's the matter with you? You ever wonder who's asking you that? That's the life force, the God force, the, the, this power inside of yourself that kind of goes, whoa, 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 what are you doing to me? Like, you, you realize that when it's over, it's over. You're not going to keep on living. And I have a stake in this thing, right? Because I want to be a part of this life. I, I have more planned for you than, than you have planned for you. That's why that internal thing is always questioned, that there is hope, that there is something different. How many people have had that? How many people have that inner voice that said, hey, you, what are you doing? And you answer back, I'm not too sure. <laughs> now, you ever wonder who you're having a conversation with? Anyways, that's that life force that says, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't stand on the X. Anyways, why are you coyote? Okay, go ahead. It may be obscured by calamity, by pomp, by worship of other things. But in some form or another, it is there. For faith in a power greater than ourselves and miraculous demonstrations of that power in human lives are facts as old as man himself. So we talked about on the page previous to that 54 that we are governed by thoughts, feelings, and power and worship. Right, we worship people, places, and things. We uh, ideas of what are going to make our life better, what are going to make me feel better. It's mis directed energy and we pursue this based on these ideas that cause us all our problems so here they're saying we're going to take that same energy and we're going to redirect it that works toward our betterment instead of our demise we're going to reallocate it to see where it stems from and we're going to harness our will along god's will for us by praying for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out so you are taking energy in your belief system and you're shifting it into the ideas being presented here to develop your life. It's the same thing, but you present it with new ideas and new scope and new energy. You're governing along a new line. Go ahead. We finally saw that faith in some kind of God was a part of our makeup, just as much as the feeling we have for a friend. Sometimes we had to search fearlessly, but he was there. He was as much a fact as we were. We found the great reality deep down within us. In the last analysis, it is only there that he may be found. So what it does that mean, knows. in the last analysis? In the last place we'd look. Yeah, how many people would look deep down within for, for this connection to a power greater than yourself, a life force that will solve all your problems? How many people realize this force is already there, but it's blocked by calamity, resentment, fear, and all these other things? This life force has always been there that connects you to everything. The fellowship of the spirit that has us connected to everything and everyone, but we don't know that because we become animal-based, instinct-based. And when you're instinct-based, it's fight or flight, and it's all about me. But we don't know that because it's security. It's like when this, this thing started happening, COVID-19, people are getting 300 rolls of toilet paper. Like, how much ash you got to wipe? Like, like what the hell? Like, it's, it's instinct-based stuff, right? You know, it's like, ah, I got to protect my ass, right? Like, it's crazy. Like, it's, it's crazy. What, what, like, how many rolls do you need? Like, they're still sitting there, like, I get comforted looking at all the rolls of toilet paper like this. Shit. I got security there, right? It's a pretty it's shitty it's outlook. The bees and cover that comes so, that one. That's I right. That's right. You ever try one ply? No, no. It's it's okay. So moving on. So deep down within. So we go page sixty three. You'll see the theme where I'm getting here. On page sixty three, they talk about an idea. Here, a lot of people think I, I experienced this. The, third, the top of 63 talks about their experience having gone through this course of action. Page 62 talks about the human condition, that we're all subject to these things and these principles or these, these uh, um, uh, uh, 
situations in life, right? But the alcoholic is an extreme example of the human condition. So we had to find a solution for the human condition because we don't treat alcoholism. We have a treatment for alcoholism, which is a big difference. We agreed in step one that alcoholism is above our pay grade. We're beyond human aid. So I need to find something that eliminates alcoholism from my life so I can treat the human condition because as long as alcoholism is present, I'll continue to drink. What eliminates alcoholism is the psychic change or spiritual experience. I'm still alcoholic, but I no longer have an alcoholic mind. So that's what they're talking about on page 63. They talk about an experience they have. Now they're saying, if you want this experience, let's start. We are now at step three. And then they talk about here is a group of ideas that are obtainable through a course of action. It doesn't say it's obtainable now. It says these things are available if I'm willing to do the rest of the work. So then on page 64, we find out that alcohol is but a symptom, so we had to get down the cause and condition of these things that block us off. We find resentment is the number one offender, right? From it, from resentment forms all spiritual disease. Not from alcoholism, from the resentment for, comes all forms of spiritual disease. It's the first time they reference spiritual disease in regards to resentment, not alcoholism. Then as we went through this, we've gone through it in the other tapes, by the time we get to page 66, we see that these feelings, these emotions, or these energies block us off from the sunlight of the spirit. These things were poisoned, they're the dubious luxury of normal people, but for us it kills us. And it talks about alcoholism or the insanity of alcohol returning right i'm gonna to have to get a cold bucket of water here so what happens then <laughs> so so then what happens is they talk about but with the alcoholic whose hope is the maintenance and growth of a spiritual experience this business of resentment is infinitely grave we find that it's fatal for when harboring such feelings they're talking about the energy associated with resentments anybody ever feel that energy associated with resentments it becomes bottled and it turns on ourselves. And then what happens is we work toward our own demise by not being able to release it, right? So what happens is this puts like a pressure cooker or that valve within inside of our soul, our spirit that releases that energy. And they talk about here on the bottom of 66 is we learn how to master resentment, harness this energy and make it work toward our betterment instead of our demise. So we see the first part of the resentment exercise is to learn how to master resentment. The second part is about outgrowing fear, right? And so by the time we, we kind of get to page 68, we find out what God's will for us is, right? Did you want to hit us up with that? Perhaps there's a better way? Perhaps there is a better way. We think so. For we are now on a different basis, the basis of trusting and relying upon God. We trust infinite God rather than our finite selves. We are in the world to play the role he assigns just to the extent that we do as we think he would have us and humbly reply upon him. Does he enable us to match calamity with serenity? It's pretty cool stuff. It didn't say you'd be absence of calamity, that you'd be absence of problems, right? You wouldn't be absent, of but you'd have the serenity and able to face these things. How does the serenity prayer grow? We see that that's the whole goal of it. God grant me the serenity. If I can't find calmness and peace of mind, how well am I going to do in my reaction to life? So the first thing I need to do is get the pause. I have the fight or flight instinct, but now I'm getting the pause instinct because I'm able to acknowledge this energy or this thing rising up in myself that used to make my decisions for me, but I'm able to step back from it now, see it for what it is, reallocate the energy tied to that, and move it in a new direction instead of my own demise. And they talk about here, we never... We never apologize to anyone for depending upon our creator. We can laugh at those who think spirituality the way of weakness. Paradoxically, it is the way of strength. The verdict of the ages is that faith means courage. All men of faith have courage. They trust their God. We never apologize for God. So if you're apologizing for God in meetings where people stop it. You hear people apologizing for God. Stop it. Right, this is this 
got our fellowship. It's the life-changing stuff. We understand what they mean by God now. This power, creative, intelligent, creative, whatever you want to call it, your interpretation of the underlying is access to the power that created this change that has the miracles sitting here on the screen. 182 of us saved from the fate that used to await us. That is pretty miraculous. People say, well, I don't know if there's God. Well, take a good look at the screen. This is God's portfolio. Right? You ever see those people constructing where they have their portfolio? I have a site. This is, this is some of the work I've done. This is what it used to look like. This is what happened when I put it again. And this is what it looks like now. This is what Joe, look, that's what Joe looks like now. <laughs> so, so when you look at stuff like him, you go, wow, God did that for him? Then there's hope for me. And then you kind of go, I don't know. That's one out of one. And then you go, well, look at Kim. And then you go, whoa. And then look at Steve. Look at Brian. Look at Kimber. Look at, look at, like, look at all the people sitting here paying attention. There's something at work here. And where is it available? In the now, the here and now, right? Where does trust happen? In now, the now. I can only trust now. Where does fear happen now? So they're saying here, here's the next part of learning to outgrow fear. Go ahead. Instead, we let him demonstrate through us what he can do. We ask him to remove our fear and direct our attention to what he would have us be. At once, we commence to outgrow fear. So, we ask him to remove our fear. In order to ask something to be removed, you have to acknowledge it's there. You feel your energy change. You feel the anxiety. Anybody ever feel fear here, overthinking? Anxiety, how many people are anxiety-based? That's a symptom of thinking too much. Thinking too much is a symptom of fear, right? So if I was able to, to be absent of fear and outgrow it, would I be thinking as much? I wouldn't be so impending calamity and doom, right? I'm able to create the, the calm for a second to match calamity with serenity, ease my mind, redirect what's happening in there start controlling right instead of being the narrator of what happens up there instead of it being the narrator of me i start having domain over my mind instead of my mind having domain over me through access of spiritual principles it's pretty cool stuff that's what they're saying here the next part is we've learned how to meditate we've learned how to uh in in the conduct right we get a right idea for the future and we ask god's kind of direction right and then at the bottom here page 69 it says in meditation well, in we, meditation yep. we ask god what we should do about each specific matter the right answer will come if we want it so pretty good we're starting to have a shift in here we're starting to have relationship with this power this internal thing and on page 71 which is the whole purpose of this exercise when If you follow the bouncing ball here, lack of power was I, my dilemma. Where and how was I to find this power? Well, that's what exactly what this book is about. So what I need to do is do what those that did before me did to have the same experience they had. Not only do I need the understanding of these things, you hear people say, I'm working the steps. It's not about working the steps. It's about doing the steps to have the experience. Once I have the experiences about maintaining and developing that experience, the steps were never meant to be worked on a daily basis. They were meant as a vehicle to tap into a power greater than myself and learn and rely on that power, not learn and rely on myself. Because if I'm working on the steps, who am I working? I'm working on me. I'm the problem. Remember, my brain is cunning, baffling, and powerful. It baffles the shit out of me what it gets me into and the great ideas I come up with. Every, right? My brain's job is to be in control. The great obsession of every alcoholic is to have mastery over their own lives, to be their own solution. Anybody want to argue that here? How many people try to be their own solution here? Yeah. And what makes you convinced you can't be your own solution is pain. Created by who? Conflict with people, places, and things, right? We're the orchestrator of our own 
Reality, yay! Anybody want to start the wave at the top of the screen and kind of go right through on that? That's not good news. But they're saying we have a new experience now. And so this is what, the, if I've gone through the four step as they did, which is pretty cool, the whole purpose of this thing is to tap into a power grid of them ourselves, which will solve our problem, not help us solve our problem. We like that wording of help us solve our problem. If God needs your help, you've tapped into the wrong energy, or the wrong source, right? Okay, we hope. Page 71. My dog. We hope you are convinced now that God can remove whatever self-will has blocked you off from him. So they're collectively saying, we hope you're convinced like we were. We hope you're having the same experience that we did. And since thousands, millions of people have had the same experience, but I need to do it exactly the same way they did. If I change the recipe, I change the outcome. If I don't understand what they're talking about or what they did, then I won't be able to pursue the same outcome and, and reality that they have. Does that kind of make sense? So now I have the exact same recipe and the exact same experience that they did. They're saying, we hope, right? You are convinced now as we were convinced and you're having the same experience that this power Right, can remove whatever self-will has blocked you off from him. You have the recipe for these things now, which is cool. Sorry, go ahead. If you have already made a decision and an inventory of your gross or handicaps, you have made a good beginning. That being so, you have swallowed and digested some big chunks of truth about yourself. Oh, yeah. So then we get into, we find out again what the fifth step is about is to have a new relationship with our creator. See, they changed the word creator, God, creative intelligence, a new, a new experience with this power that resides within. That's the whole purpose of this thing. So we find out, we go through there, the biggest uh, thing we have in the fifth step is to learn prayer to find out who, who it is to hear it. We finish on page 70, 75. They talk about here that we may have had certain spiritual beliefs but now we begin to have a spiritual experience <laughs> which is cool right because all that stuff been blocking me off from the source is now removed or 90 percent of them page 76 reconfirms my step three with a new scope on it right because i reconfirm on step six is there's things with inside of me that I can't shake that I'm still hanging on to, but I pray for willingness to have these things removed. Fear, resentment, and harms and conduct that are still present, that are still not being able, that are not moving. There's certain resentments, certain fears that are still present. That's what they mean by these defects that are still determining my, my response to life and people, places, and things. There's something defective in me. Right, we covered this in great detail last week. That means there's something like, um, uh, based on my life, I was diagnosed early in my life with uh, um, post traumatic stress disorder. I've had post traumatic stress disorder for so long, based on the lifestyle that it then becomes a personality disorder, becomes a part of your character. And that's like what they're talking about. These things have been present so long, they become a part of your character and your response to life and how your go-to and how you respond, react to people is deep down within. You understand what these things are because you digested and swallowed some big chunks of truth about yourself, how you treat people, places, things, and your response to people you love and your conduct. And how these things, you're still doing things that you want don't want to do and not doing things that you do want to do. Anybody here like that? So then they talk about in step seven, we reconfirm who does the change and what does the change based on our relationship, right? And that God and our, so we said here, have all of me, good and bad. So now, then on page 77, it tells us what our real purpose is, is to fit ourselves. You got to underline, to fit ourselves means it takes effort. Nothing happens in God's world by mistake. Yeah, we already know that. We've done a four and five. We've seen why everything happened it was the absence of God. God wasn't present in those things. Stop blaming God for them. Those sick people were not God-driven or God-directed, right? We've answered all these things, right? Why did I do these things to the, the people that I did things to? It was the absence of God. I was driven by my animal instincts, Right? To fit ourselves to be of maximum service to God and the people around us. Okay, now, you see the theme here through the book? How many people see the theme here? So you notice it's not about you. How many people kind of found that a little disappointing? 
<laughs> it's about something else here that creates a different experience. So we did 6 and 7, and we read through 8 and 9. We have our list from step 4. We're reading through. Follow me here. On page 76, we right? What does it say, Joe? We look at. Right? We're looking at 8 and 9. It didn't say go start doing it. It says we're looking at it. We're it reviewing. Says, well, it says, it says, let's look at steps 8 and 9. Let's look. Let's have a look at what we're about to do. Not run and do it. And then it says there's probably still some misgivings as we look over the list of business acquaintance and friends we have hurt through our conduct. We see, we're looking. So we're sitting at home. Just pretend last week this meeting's continued. We've read through all these different scenarios that they've been through that give us helpful hints. And most of these scenarios involve prayer and meditation, suggesting that we're doing step 11, right? A lot of people say, oh, the steps are in order for reason. That's right. But they're all done collectively. They're not done individually. The whole idea of the steps is, is to remove the separations of them to practice these principles in all my affairs that keeps me connected to the source that I'm governed by something greater than me and not directed by myself. Because if I start doing my 8s and 9s before I do my 11 and 10, 11 and 12s, then I'm self-directed. I'm the problem. I need to seek counsel with something greater than me to find a power accessible that creates a change within inside of me to have a different experience with the people around me. So, now, we let's go to page 76. We've read through this, and it talks about, if we kind of go through a page uh, 83, they talked about the... Spiritual life is not a theory. We have to live. So we just finished reading it. We're going to continue to read this thought or this idea based on the things we've looked at and the things that we're going to start to look how to fix or correct or to alter. Does that kind of make sense? We're, we looked at 8 and 9, and now they're going to say, we've just read through all these different scenarios or possibilities. And the spiritual life is not a theory. We has, have to live it every day. They talk about here, Right. Right? Our behavior will convince people as we go. They talk about living this thing and a duration of time. That's the conversation that they're having here. Why don't we just start with theirs? Kimberly, this, this, the spiritual life. The spiritual life is not a theory. We have to live it. Unless one's family expresses a desire to live upon spiritual principles, we think we ought not to urge them. We should not talk incessantly to them about spiritual matters. They will change in time. Our behavior will convince them more than our words. We <laughs> must remember that 10 or 20 years of drunkenness would make a skeptic out of anyone. Anybody got skeptics still around them? Yeah, well, you know what? That's why they say demonstration of these things, right? demonstration they're going to give us the recipe so what there's that big word again there, yeah. may, there may be some wrongs we can never fully right we don't worry about them if we can honestly say to ourselves that we would write them if we could some people cannot be seen we send them an honest letter and there may be a valid reason for postponement in some cases but we don't delay if it can be avoided. We should be sensible, tactful, considerate, and humble without being servile or scraping. As God's people, we stand on our feet. We don't crawl before anyone. That's awesome, eh? And if, this way you need sponsorship and guidance because everybody would think everybody needs a letter. <laughs> right? I'll just send everybody a letter. I'll take care of everybody. No, sponsorship, tact, and praying. For direction, right? And this is where so here's the biggest word in the book. If we are painstaking about this phase of our development. About what phase of our development? About the amends process. Have we started the process yet? No, they're saying if, if, right? If we are painstaking about this phase of our development, painstaking means with purpose. Right? With purpose. So they're saying as the as these amends, if I'm painstaking, that means I pursue these things that I've just read about and my list. If I pursue these things, if I'm painstaking about these things, are we agreed on that or not? 
Is that what it says or are we saying it? That's what it says. Listen, we will be... We will be amazed before we are halfway through. Halfway through what? This process, right? So they're giving us an idea here. We'll be amazed before we're halfway through this process. That doesn't mean we've done the process yet. It means they're giving us a scope of what this is going to look like based on their experience of having done it. Right? We'll be amazed because you can think about it. When you, how many people looked at that amends list? Imagine when you're halfway through that, how you would feel about you, your life, and the people in the world around you. That stuff that's eating your lunch for you, that now you're eating your lunch alone with a power greater than yourself and a couple sponsees. Wouldn't that be a lot better luncheon than all those people that have been eating your lunch? Wouldn't you know a new freedom and new happiness if you took care of a lot of those bills and you took care of a lot of those people and you took care of some of those things? All those things that torment you, if you're at peace with that, how would you be? Would you be a little, right? Amazed? Amazed. Amazed. Is that amazed the same as somewhat thrilled? You'll be amazed. Most people talk about the promises like, yeah, like Eeyore. Yeah, the promises are coming true. If you want what I have, <laughs> and I'm willing to go to more meetings to get it, <laughs> you know, like, I'm sorry, but amazed, like, like I'm, I remember, I kind of, uh, I heard these people, these two wives talking about their husbands. I was, I was playing baseball. I was newly sober the, the last time I got sober. I was on a sober baseball team, and they were talking about their husband and the experience their husbands were having. The wives were having. The promises come true as the result of their husband's experience. They were experiencing new freedom. And and they were describing this change that happened in their husbands and this miraculous thing, this demonstration that they were living. And as they were speaking, a part of me went, I'm not having that experience. I'm not feeling those things. Right? I was, and I, like, out of all the conversations I've heard in my life, that impacted me because that what they were saying and what I was experiencing was two different things. As I went through this, I concur what they're saying with. I've been amazed as, as the result of inviting a power greater than myself into my life and being directed by that as I do my, my nines. So amazed means this. How many people have been on a roller coaster here? So what happens is my, uh, I went to uh, Wonderland years ago. My daughter was 12 and we went on all the rides, and, and there was this new roller coaster ride, and she says she wanted to go now. And I said, oh, the, the line's kind of long. All the ro- all Once you've been on these roller coasters, they're all the same thing. I said, let's just go on this one over here. She says, no, Dad, I want to go on this one. This one looks more fun. I said, they're all the same thing. Talking out of my experience, I've been in them all, and I'm talking real nonchalant about it. As you can tell, I have that monotone. And that's how a lot of people talk about the promises. So we got on this ride. It was new because all it was was a seat and a handle and a footrest. I thought, isn't this interesting? I've never been on anything quite like this. I'm having a new experience with these roller coasters that I've never had quite before. And that's kind of like the steps. So as we started to go on this thing, there was no clicking sound as the old roller coasters. How you know when you start, click, 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 click. Or when you start thinking, click, 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 click. That sound that happens around you or in your mind. So I'm going up this thing and I'm, and I'm comforting my daughter. I said, you know, it's going to be okay. Just relax. You know, you'd be a little scared. I'm not paying attention on how high we're going. This thing lets loose. I'm screaming louder than my daughter. My veins in my neck are popping out. And I'm like, I, 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 I'm just like, oh, shit. I couldn't believe what was happening. It was amazing. It was like one of the, the most extravagant experience I've ever had in my life. It was like, like 13 years ago. And I'm still talking amazed with it. When I got off that roller coaster, I was like, holy shit, that was amazing. I've never experienced anything like that in my life. Then I found out it was one of the top 10 roller coasters in the world. It was called the Bulimith. My daughter goes, you want to go on it again? I said, I'm good. (laughs) I'm good. That experience will last me a lifetime. You'll be amazed before you're halfway through. Anyway, you see the difference? How many people want the experience of, yeah, I've been doing the steps. 
really enjoying myself. Or, man, I've been doing this shit and I got a life beyond anything you could ever imagine. I got the story of Alcoholics Anonymous happening in my life. I got a story better than anything I could ever have created on myself. The life I have now is mind-boggling. And all I had to do was burn my life to the ground to make your life look more appealing than my life. And when I did what you did, I never looked back. 31 years later, I'm at peace and harmony. I have a life beyond anything I, you could ever imagine. And this was the start of it. Anyhow. We are going to know <laughs> a new freedom and a new happiness. We will not regret the past nor wish to shut the door on it. We're going to. We, we're not, we are, right? We are going to know a new freedom. We doesn't say we are experiencing a new freedom. We're going to as the result of the work. They're having a conversation here on the idea that what lies ahead of us, true or false. Is that what you're reading or is that, am I making that up here? Everybody getting that? Just put up your hand if you're kind of getting that now when you look at it. It's a lot different than you hear people in meetings. I've gone to 30 meetings now. The promises are coming true. No, the delusion's coming true. Right? Because if you didn't do this work, it happens as the result of the work. If you haven't done this, it happens as the result of your connection to a power greater than yourself. It doesn't happen as a result of you connected to you. You hear the people say, anybody here, the promises are coming true. I got a new job. I got a new girlfriend. I got, I got all these things back. Yeah, guess who's coming back? Right? So they talk about here, can I be at peace if these things happen or don't happen. They're talking about the promises being a new freedom and happiness with inside of myself, not outside of myself. They're not external circumstances. They're internal circumstances. Because unless I experience this change with inside of me, I'm not staying here. We will not regret the past nor wish to shut the door on it. True. 100% regret- true. What about for you, Kim? Yeah, Absolutely. All that shame and guilt and black cloud and skeletons in the closet are gone. Not eating my lunch anymore. I'm eating good. I'm eating good. No. <laughs> yeah. We will comprehend the word serenity and we will know peace. So they're saying you think you comprehend the word serenity and no peace. When you experience this, it'll be mind boggling. Who is an example that was Bill? When Bill experienced this freedom and happiness, he was alarmed by it. He kind of went, whoa, 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 what's going on here? He phoned his friend, right, Dr. Silver, says, hey, doctor goes, what's up? He says, I don't know. I'm feeling kind of contented, happy, joyous, and free. I, 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 said, I said, I'm probably feeling a little, I'm feeling like, like life's okay. The doctor says, and you're having a problem with that? Yeah, am I losing my mind? Because <laughs> he's experiencing something on a whole new level. And that's the kind of mind you want to be losing to a stent when you get on the right side of crazy that you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, this is all right. This is kind of cool. And people go, yeah, it's kind of cool, right? It's Jack Nicholson's yellow bus. We're all going fishing, and you're going to have a good time. Grab a fishing rod. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> go ahead. No matter how far down the scale we have gone, we will see how our experience can benefit others. And, and some of us gone that, down that scale. I remember going to my sponsor says, says I could get on, off the elevator anytime I want. Remember, I was in and out for 11 years. I had a really keen brain that used to always outthink me. So I could get off the elevator anytime I want. He says, listen, you have to go up three flights of stairs just to get to the elevator. Right, I, I, I'm the type of guy. I think I hit bottom and then roll over into the sewer system. Right, so it's kind of like yeah, the internal thing. Okay, that feeling of uselessness and self pity will disappear. Oh man, how many people like the idea of that? True, it does. True, and when it starts to creep back, we'll have a recipe in order to deal with it that that got us to this place. We will lose interest in selfish things and gain interest in our fellows. Self-seeking will slip away. Our whole attitude and outlook upon life will change. Does that, does that sound a bit like a psychic change or spiritual experience? Well, yeah, yeah you, you're gaining interest in your fellows. Like, you know, you're thinking uh, not of self anymore. You know, you're... you're actually concerned with the well-being of those around you and those that you've done harm to and for the first time you're wondering what you could do about it that's pretty wild stuff and and that 
And is that not confirming what it said in step three about this experience that's available to us? 100%. Right? And we see that it hasn't happened yet because I'm just reading about it. That's right. Right? It's still a, a, a thought put those before us by those who have experienced it. This is what awaits us if we're willing to maintain and keep the course, right? Yep. Our whole attitude and outlook upon life will change. Fear of people and economic insecurity will leave us. We will intuitively know how to handle situations which used to baffle us. We will suddenly realize that God is doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. What's the greatest realization and promise there? That God is doing for us that we what we could not do for ourselves. So well, when most people talk about the promises, they don't talk about their relationship with a power greater than himself being the source of this change in experience. Most people talk about people, places, and things, and the things they get back, and self-reliance as being, look what I'm doing, look what I'm getting, look, 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 look at me, look, look at all the hard work, me, 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 me. No humility in that whatsoever because self is still directing them. They don't know that. They don't know what it sounds like because those of us who went through this have been through this and have this experience. We have an earmark. We listen to, like Joe, when I listen to my guys, I see where God is in their conversation or where the access to this power is or where their humility lies and what enables them to live the life that they live. And when I hear the absence of humility, the absence of source, or the absence of connection, that tells me they're in trouble. Like we listen to speakers, it's really interesting when you listen to speakers, listen to how many times they, they, they kind of give God or this power or this course of action the credit for the experience that they're having. Where's, God, where's God's fingerprints in their life? And usually for those who haven't been through this, they're nowhere to be found. It's self's fingerprint still all over the thing. So the greatest promise here is, is this relationship. And as the result of this relationship, we see that God makes all these things possible. He solves all my problems and he'll give me the means I need to face each and every one of these situations if I'm willing to have him and seek his counsel. So as I did my nines, I seen God show up in ways that are absolutely mind boggling. So they say I may have had certain spiritual beliefs, but as I do my nines, I start seeing how this power not only works in my life, but the life around me and how God really orchestrates the things that if I'm willing for his direction and care. And what that kind of looks like real fast, one of, one of the probably how God works is my inability to see that was always the problem. The steps removed the obstacles that I am able to see this thing at work, not only in my life, but in the universe and in the, in the world around me. And when, I went, um, when I went back to Quebec to take care of some amends that some people I haven't seen in a long time, it was my family, um, back in the day, it was before cell phones. My sponsor said, remember, you travel with God and you never travel alone. The God you stand before is greater than any power that you'll stand before. Trust and rely on God. So I said, okay. So he says, every time you get to a bus, do you, anybody ever travel on buses here? You get to these major hubs and you switch buses. They clean the bus. You get on. So when I got off on these buses, uh, I would uh, go in, in the station and I'd ask any friends of Bill W over the PA system. And I went right across Canada and not at one, there was three major hubs or major changes of buses and not one friend of Bill W's. I was on the last part of the trip. I'm sitting on the bus in the front of the bus. I'm listening to cassettes of, of uh, the grapevine, steps 311 and letting go, and, and the art of uh, uh, practicing these principles. And I'm talking to God. I'm sitting in that front, in the third row back. And I said, God, you said you'd look after me. On page 63, there's a contract there that says, if I'm willing to do what it takes, that you'll look after me. I'm not feeling that, God. You said you'd look after I'm calling God out, right? I don't know if anybody's ever done this. I'm new in sobriety. I'm making amends. You said you look after me. Give me what I need to make this stuff and then I'd never be alone. I said, so I'm getting squirmy. I see I'm getting like this, right? I'm about an hour out from where I got to go. This lady beside me goes, you okay? I said, yeah, I just got to go see these people. I haven't seen them for a long time. I got to go make right and stuff. She goes, yeah, I had to do that. She says, I'm a sober member of Alcoholics Anonymous for the last 20 years. My name is blah, blah, blah. 
when she said that to me, I looked at God and said, oh, you're funny, eh? Ha, 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 right? Like this person was sitting beside me the whole time. Everything I needed was right there. My inability to see that. I was so wrapped up in self, I couldn't have a conversation with the person beside me. They are probably reading the big book. But I couldn't see it because I was too busy talking to me. There was an interruption by one of God's agents, this person beside me, going, hey, are you okay? There's something that God conscious in her probably said take a look at that person beside you and ask this lady asked are you okay so you can imagine how i was moving in my seat right you ever watch newcomers in meetings well so that's how god has showed up at every single situation in my life when i've allowed this thing and so that's where they talk about that's the most amazing promise in there sorry i got carried away there go ahead are these extravagant promises we think not they are being fulfilled amongst us, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. They will always materialize if we work for them. And that's through the connection and disciplines of pursuing the remedy for clearing up my past and creating peace with my present. It will always materialize if I pursue the spiritual solution to my answers not pursue me and my thinking. So I need to pursue this, it'll always material, what will material? My relationship with this power that creates the change within me that solves all my problems. It'll material, if I work toward this thing, it'll materialize, it's like a spiritual apprenticeship, right? You ever see people who've done apprenticeship, they're doctors or uh, got their bachelors, it takes a lot of work and the more work they work toward it, the closer they get to their goal. When they get their goal of becoming a doctor or a tradesman, a carpenter, an electrician, a cook, whatever, when they get their fulfillment, their certificate, their psychic change, their spiritual experience, the work begins. Then they develop their career. And that's like us. Once we have the psychic change, their spiritual experience by being connected to spirit, this is a spiritual apprenticeship, right? And then when I move toward that idea, I'm able to Harness these things, okay? This thought brings us to step 10. Okay, so hold it. One second. We're going to break this up a bit. This thought brings us to step 10. This thought brings us to step 10. All the other steps have working before them. It says we need action and more action. Each action step says there's action before it, right? Step four, step five, step eight, step nine, and then 11 and 12. 12 has two actions in it. Here it says this thought brings us to step 10. What thought? The thought of the promises and the conversation we had about our eight and nines. Yes or no? Because it's a continuation. This thought, what? Of everything we've been talking about here. This thought brings us to step 10, right? Which suggests we continue to take personal inventory okay so hold on we're gonna break it up a bit sorry kim so step 10 suggests that we continue what does continue mean is that a new continue if you're getting directions from somebody if you're going to a new location that you haven't been to before and someone gave you the, the idea of how to get there a map step 12 would be you've arrived Right? Step 10 would be, hey, you're talking to this person. I don't see this exit that you're talking about. Well, continue on this road. Everything. Are you on this road? Continue. Continue means continue. Is that, is that kind of complicated? What does continue mean? Keep going, right? We continue to set right any new mistakes as we go along. We vigorously commence this way of living as we cleaned up the past. So they're saying what I'm going to continue to do is what I learned in my four, five, six, and seven. I'm going to continue these principles as I vigorously cleaned up the past. Right? I'm going to continue this. So they're saying we started this conversation. They're not giving us new conversation, new instructions here. They're reconfirming something that they've already, we've already done. They're reconfirming something. Yes or no? Anybody Anybody see new instructions there? They say continue doing what you learned here. Mastering resentment, outgrowing fear, and moving toward the right idea of your conduct. Right? As you clean up the past. Watch for these things. These things. Watch for right new mistakes as we go along and 
clean them up as you go along. Okay, we have... We have entered the world of the spirit. Our next function is to grow in understanding and effectiveness. Okay, so what was the whole purpose of the steps? Is to have this relationship with power. Here they're saying we've entered the world of the spirit. On 164 they said we've, we've, we're part of the fellowship of the spirit. We're connected in a different way than we were before. We've entered the world of the spirit. We're a part of the collective now. We've entered the world of the spirit. I'm spiritually connected to source. I've entered, we, we have entered the world. The world. We have entered. We're a part of this thing. Does that kind of make sense? And then it says, what's our next function now that we've entered this this reality, this domain, or this experience, this con collectiveness, this this intuitive, this thing with inside of me that connects me to source. What's my next one? The, there's the, the first instruction. What's the first instruction in step 10 other than continue? It says our next function. What does that mean, our next function? That's the instruction here. They said this thought. They're saying they're giving us the first instruction in step 10 is that we've entered the world of the spirit, which is the purpose of the steps. Yes? Yeah. Our next function, they're saying this is what needs to happen next. Continue doing what you're doing, but this is what needs to happen next. Are we all, are we all good with that? Yeah. If you're good with that, kind of put up your hand and say, yeah, I'm kind of good with what it's saying. Right? Okay. Can this is not an overnight matter. It should oh, continue oh, sorry. for our... Sorry. Our next function is to grow in understanding and effectiveness. Of what? <laughs> our next function, our, our next function, us, our next function is to grow in understanding and effectiveness. Of what? Of this... We've entered the world of the spirit. Our next function is growing understanding and effectiveness of this world, of this spiritual realm. That's our next function, right? Is to grow an understanding and effectiveness of this spiritual realm that I've just entered. This connection, this relationship, this power. My next function is to see how I operate or how it operates and, and to grow effective in this thing. Does that kind of, is that kind of cool? And guess so, what? What? It's not an overnight matter. So, they're going to give us instructions here. Okay, it's not an overnight matter. It is not an overnight matter. It should continue for our lifetime. Continue to watch for selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear. Because? Because why? Because these are indicators that I'm spiritually off and self is starting to have domain. Or is that as I clean up the past, some of these things are going to come to the surface again. I'm going to try to re-look at it the way I used to look at it on a non-spiritual basis, so I need to reallocate or redo the exercise to look at it differently. Anybody have problems with uh, selfishness, resentment, and dishonesty and fear when you're doing your amends? Oh, yeah. You see how these things want to come back up again, and if you start talking to it, you're hooped. If you start talking to your resentment and fears and you start being in counsel with that stuff, you're dead in the water. This is where you step back from it and go, whoa, here's this energy change with inside of me again. This narrator is trying to redetermine the story. No, I've already got a new story, a new narration that I need to spend time looking at. Does that kind of make sense? I've already done that in my four and five. I have a new way of looking at things and I need to stick to the new story. Yeah. When these crop up, we ask God at once to remove them. So if they crop up, that means they're underlying, which is step six stuff. Crop up means there's still energy connected to it. They're not new. When they crop up, when these things come up, you're usually in association with stuff that's already happened. Remember, we're just reading this, right? We just got into this idea here of we just finished this. We're just entering this new thought pattern. Saying we're into the world of the spirit. Our next function is growing understanding and effectiveness. Continue to watch for these things because we're learning how to master resentment. We're learning how to outgrow fear. And we're learning about our conduct and these things that we still have attachment to. So when they come up, when they resurface, apply this solution to it. Does that kind of make sense? If we're learning yeah. this thing as we go along here. Okay. 
we discuss them with someone immediately. And okay, make so you, you, sorry, you need to back up. When these crop up, what's the recipe? We acknowledge, right? Remember the recipe in four? The fear, when this thing happens, we acknowledge that there's a shift in my thinking and my energy. That's the first thing. That's the recipe of this whole thing, is acknowledge prayer and redirect. So here they're asking you to be aware of what's happening inside of you as an observer. Step back from it. And once you acknowledge this thing's um, uh, come up, we step back from it. And then what's the next instruction? Once you acknowledge it and step back from it, become aware of it. What's the most critical point of the development? We ask God at once to remove them. Not to write about them, not to talk about them, not to go home and eat a bucket of ice cream and relive it. We've already dealt with it in our four and our five and our six. And so we've dealt with these things. We see these things are poison. I cannot afford to be narrated a new story. I have a way of dealing with these things. I'm not going to permit these things to eat my lunch anymore. At once. No, I am not going to buy into this story anymore. I'm changing the channel clicker. First, I turn down the sound. Then I step back from the screen and I'm not part of that story anymore. I move to a new channel with inside of myself and narrate a new story. We ask God at once to remove them. To remove them doesn't mean let's drag it around for three days and talk about it with 15 people. Because when you start concentrating it and working, when you start working on that, you're giving it power. You're re restrengthening the story, your story. A lot of us are stuck to our story. Back to self-reliance. That was fun. Okay. We discuss them with someone immediately and make amends quickly if we have harmed anyone. Then we resoutly turn our thoughts to someone we can help. Love and tolerance of others ah. is our code. That's the same recipe Bill had in his story when he was plagued by waves of resentment that nearly drove him to drink again. That means he had the idea of drinking again. Right? The idea was creeping back in about drinking. But what saved the day was this recipe inviting God into it and going to work with another alcoholic. Right? Someone we can help. It doesn't even have to be an alcoholic. Just somebody. Just go do something other than sit there and think for God's sake. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Phone a friend. <laughs> no. Go ahead. And we have ceased fighting anything or anyone, even alcohol. For by this time, sanity will have returned. We will seldom be interested in liquor. If tempted, we recoil from it as from a hot flame. Fighting. When they say, we cease fighting. It didn't mean standing our ground and saying our truth. Fighting. You know what a fight is for us? A fight. We see fighting these people. It doesn't mean you don't stand your ground. It doesn't mean you don't make right the injustices that happen around you. It doesn't mean you don't take a stand for things. Right? It means that I cease fighting people. But it doesn't mean, like, when somebody, like, we had a problem with this guy coming to the door and all, we phoned the police, we took care of this stuff. Didn't mean I let him in, acceptance is the answer to all my problems, can I help you with the TV? Is your car over here? Like, it doesn't mean that. If there's an intruder coming in my house, I will do the necessary stuff to take care of the problem. This guy, um, this the, one of oh, my kids' uh, 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 partners hurt my daughter. Acceptance wasn't the answer to all my problems. What it was was a conversation the same way he had with my daughter. Exact same conversation. So he was understanding in a loving way. I was able to carry a message to him in a way where it no longer affected my daughter. Does that kind of make sense? We, we bastardize the shit out of this stuff. Cease fighting. I don't mean to fight with you, but I'm going to stand my ground. I'm not going to compromise who I am and what I am, and my truth or my principles. I'm going to say what I need to do. When a neighbor's dog was shitting on my lawn, I didn't go acceptance is the answer to all my problems. I built a fence. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. 
For by this time, sanity will have returned. They're talking about, as I'm cleaning up the past, halfway through my night, they're talking about here an idea that I'm building on here. By this time, sanity will have returned. Not as the result of reading it, as the result of the application of these principles of cleaning up my past and making right. In the spiritual appendix in the back of the book, it says it takes a few months to bring this change about us. We're just reading the instructions here. Our next function, by this time, sanity will have returned because I've taken care of a lot of the stuff. I've entered a new relationship with a power greater than myself, okay? Um, we are react sanely and normally, and we will find that this has happened automatically. We will see that our new attitude toward liquor has been given us without any thought or effort on our part. It just comes. That is the miracle of it. We are not fighting it, neither are we avoiding temptation. We feel as though we have been placed in a position of neutrality, safe and protected. We have not even sworn off. Instead, the problem has been removed. Removed. I'm no longer dealing with alcoholism. Gone. Gone. But I'm still alcoholic. What I have is a daily re The problem is above my pay grade. I don't treat alcoholism. I have a treatment for it. Yeah. I'm not working on alcoholism. If I'm working on alcoholism, I'm drinking. Right? That's right. That means the, the, the problem's gone. I no longer have an alcoholic mind. Why? Because I had a psychic change or spiritual experience. If I don't have the psychic change or spiritual experience and I still have an alcoholic mind, what am I going to do, Joe? Drink. Drink. What's the promise of step one? We're going to drink as long as we have an alcoholic mind. What I mean to have is not have an alcoholic mind. What enables that is my relationship with a power grid of myself through a psychic change of spiritual experience. The problem's removed. Now I have the human dilemma that I apply these principles to. I have a new solution for me other than alcohol. Yep. That was exciting. Go ahead, Kim. Don't leave him in suspense. The problem has been removed. It does not exist for us. We are neither cocky nor are we afraid. That is our experience. This is how we react so long as we keep in fit spiritual condition. So we're not doing step one every day, keeping ourselves sober. We're not reminding ourselves every day. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's like the fence is up, right? As long as the fence is up, the dog's not getting in there. If the dog don't get in there, I don't got landmines. That's like alcoholism. As long as I keep in fit spiritual condition, right? The alcoholic mind doesn't return and I drink again. So I have a daily reprieve from this condition. From what? Alcoholism. Oh, I ruined the surprise. Go ahead. Sorry. It is easy to let up on the spiritual program of action and rest on our laurels. You know what that yeah. means, eh? Rest on our laurels, that no further accomplishment is necessary. We think it's about feeling better, not getting better. That's the biggest problem or handicap in our fellowship is that a lot of people mistake in feeling better for getting better. Yeah, right? and I've done enough and so I'm good now. Right? Get comfortable. Hey, oh, I do this, I do that, I... I'm pretty good. I need to relax. So you notice they're having a conversation here, right? They're saying as the result of working these principles, taking care of our nines, by this time sanity will have returned. But be careful. The whole purpose of the steps were to have this problem removed. But be careful. You're headed for trouble if you do, yeah. right? Because our sobriety is now contingent on our spiritual condition that gives us the daily reprieve. We don't give ourselves the daily reprieve. The daily reprieve is the result of our, what, spiritual condition, not our ability to remember. And for those who don't know, uh, day, reprieve means a stay of execution. So it's inevitable that the guaranteed promise will return. If we don't keep in fit spiritual condition, that's what it's saying there. So they're giving us no new information here. They're giving us a whole bunch of ideas here, though, and a whole bunch of conversation. Right? Okay. We are headed for trouble if for alcohol is a subtle foe. We are not cured of alcoholism. What we really have is a daily reprieve contingent on the maintenance of our spiritual condition Every day is a day when we must carry the vision of God's will into all of our activities. Do I know how to do that yet? They're giving us an idea here. They haven't given me the recipe on how to do that yet. 
They're giving me an idea. Every day is the day we must carry the vision of God's will in all our activities. Well, how do I do that? They're giving me a new idea here. We've just entered the world of the Spirit. Our next function is to grow in understanding and effectiveness of what? Of God's domain, well, right? Of God's world. How do I best serve thee? Right? Well, that's how a good do question. I best serve thee? Thy will, not mine, be done. These are thoughts which must go with us constantly. We can exercise our willpower along this line all we wish. It is the proper use of the will. So we get our will back here. We turned it over in three. We get it back here. It's up to us what we do with it now. We're in relationship. We're not in hostage taking surrender to this. this for We're in relationship. It's not a shotgun marriage. There's a big difference between being married to somebody because you have to be married to them and, and being with somebody because you love them and you see the benefit of it. This is more of the, you see the benefit of this relationship. It benefits both people because we become his agents, we become his workers. As the result of this relationship, I get to live a life beyond anything you could ever imagine. I'm in harmony in this relationship. I don't get up every morning thinking I'm doing time. I've been in a relationship where I had to get married. Every day you're doing time. Nobody here. Anybody been in a relationship you've done time in? How would you? So that's not the kind of relationship we're talking about here, right? It's the proper use of will. They haven't told me how to do that yet. Not yet, no. Oh, yeah. Here comes what the whole thing is. You know what a pivoting point is? If if you kind of get, if you lift the pencil off the page, it always wants to fall back the way you live. You get it to a certain, like like this, you get it to a certain place, and then it starts being directed by something else. It's a pivoting point, that at a certain point, it starts going the other way. Yeah. We were resistant to this thing. All those blocks are removed. Now we're being pivoted and governed. They're saying much. The whole, this is, the, what the whole book is based on is this paragraph. Everything that we've done to, to this part brings us to this paragraph. The whole book is based on this. This is the conclusion on everything we've done. And what are they saying here? What are they saying that is? Much. Much has already been said about receiving strength, inspiration, and direction from him who has all knowledge and power. True or false? True. How many people give the hands up true? True. Thumbs up. True, right? So now what do we do with all this? The biggest word in the book, if. If. Remember every time they qualify, they say if. If you've done this, you'll experience this. If you haven't done this, you won't experience this. If you're this type of alcoholic, you need this type of solution. If, 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 if. It's a qualifier for a new idea of conversation. So they said we've given you all this information. If you've done everything we've told you based on our experience... If you've done this, this is what you should experience. If we... If we have carefully followed directions, we have begun to sense the flow of his spirit into us. Where, where is this? Deep down within. We have, we have the same collective experience. For all of us, it's not for me, my understanding, mine, mine. It's us. This is our experience collectively. If you want what we have, we're all experiencing it. If you follow this the same way it's laid out, based on having the same problem, doing the same solution, and taking the same course of action, you're having the exact same experience. It's collective. It's not singular. It's collective. It's for us, not for me. It's not mine. It's ours. This is our experience. This is what we have. If we have carefully followed directions, qualifier, we've begun to sense the flow of his spirit into us, right? Then it clarifies what that is. And the same as the spiritual appendix. All our members have tapped into an inner resource. All, with a few exceptions, all our members have tapped into an inner resource of strength, what some of define as a power greater than themselves. A God, con or more religious member, call it a God consciousness. They have a personal experience with this power now, which was their lack of. Their dilemma was lack of power. Now they have an experience with it. What do we do with it now? To some extent, we have become God conscious. 
We have begun to develop this vital sixth sense. Vital. What does vital mean? Life. Vital. We've begun to divide, develop this vital sixth, sixth sense, this intuitiveness. Remember in the fourth step says, if you ask, the right answers will come. In the page 164, it says, see to it that your relationship is right. You'll intuitively know how to handle situations you used to buy. There's something. You're now connected to that life force that was always there, but now you're in relationship with. What do we do with it? But but we must go further. But we must go further. What does that mean? But we must go further. Does that mean stay here and work on 10? That means it's not about 10. It's about the 10 previous steps to get you to this position. Now what am I going to do with all this? But we must go further. That means more, notice more action. Step 10 was a thought. Now they're saying we need more action. This really gets people pissed off, especially in the treatment centers and recovery houses and people who like self-reliance. No, no, no. I work on steps 10, 11, and 12. It doesn't say that anywhere. What you work on is your relationship with a power greater than yourself that gives you a different experience. It's not about 10, 11, and 12. It's about step 12, practicing these principles that keep me connected to source. So step 11, read step 11 this week, and it will blow your mind what's in there. It will be absolutely mind-boggling when we visit this on Thursday. I guarantee it. Sorry if I got a little excited today, but I'm not sorry at all, man. This stuff is this stuff is the gravy on the biscuits. This is good. Oh man. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> Joe? Yeah, no, that was uh, that was amazing. Thanks, Tony, for your love and your service and the time you put in this carrying this message that's giving you a beautiful thirty one years of life. Um, everybody, don't miss out on the YouTube talks. Uh, we got them. This will go up on the YouTube talk. Tony R. Vancouver, uh, subscribe if you like. Also, we got a Big Book uh, discussion page on Facebook. All you got to do is uh, put, type in Big Book discussion. Uh, it'll pop up. If not, and if you're friends with us, add us. My name's Joseph. You, Seraldi, you can add me anytime you want. Uh, some of my guys put up their email for the worksheets. You can also find those on the YouTube channel. And uh, that's it. That's all I got. And this seventh tradition states that Alcoholics Anonymous be self-supporting through our own contributions. These contributions help cover expenses. So this group is meeting on the uh, Zoom account of 164 and beyond, which donates to the levels of service. Uh, but we also have obligations in real life. So this big book workshop normally takes place at the local Alano clubs here in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And even though we are not able to physically meet, we still have obligations to pay our rent so that when this crisis is over and we're allowed out in real life, we still have a place to host this meeting. Uh, we are working on a contingency plan to keep this coming to you all, to wherever you are through this Zoom account and the YouTube channels. Uh, but please donate to the um, seventh tradition so that we can keep going and, and donate to um, AA. Uh, different levels of service. I know for a fact in speaking to our local um, central office that it, it is very, very in need of funds, um, both at the intergroup level and at GSO. GSO just took their second large withdrawal from their prudent reserve. They normally have 12 months of backup fees and they just did a very substantial withdrawal and they are down to seven months of prudent reserve. So if you are able to make a donation, please do so uh, either to us here on our PayPal, which benefits all the levels of service or make a one-time donation on your own to either your local intergroup, which needs to pay staff and pay for literature or to GSO directly. Um, literature sales are down 80%. Uh, so if you have any newcomers, please encourage them to buy from AA, not from Amazon. Um, and with that, are we gonna close with step three? Well, yeah, you? yeah, Let, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's do what it's all about. Eh? For those of which we'll right. close with the third step prayer. What makes this sound part way down to page 63 for those who are not aware. Not aware. Uh, and what's the first requirement making this thing work? God. God. Yeah. I, I offer myself, myself to thee to, to build, build with me and to do with me as thou wilt. Will. Relieve me of the bondage of self that I may better do thy will. 
take away my difficulties, victory over them, may bear witness to those I would help of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. Live long and prosperous. May the force be with you. Thank you guys for having us in your home. It was awesome. Thank you. Thank you all for being a part of this.